In today's video, what body fat percentage do you need to be to see separation like this in every single muscle in your body? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I got a great question today. It's somebody that's that's been following for a while. They've had some results and now they're interested in reaching what I call shredded. Shredded. Okay, I'm going to define that as separation between every muscle because that's exactly what the question is. So let me read it here. He says, uh, Paul, I'm a fan for a few years now. Finally hit 12, 13% body fat. Um, he takes a few breaks and then he pushes his body fat down. And uh, he's about 147 pounds and 130 pounds of lean body mass at 12 to 13% body fat. So obviously very lean, 31 years old and five foot six. Calories are already pretty low, 13 to 1400 a day. Proteins 140 to 150, fats are 30 to 40. So all pretty good stuff here. Daily activity is an hour of cardio and then some weights and a uh, business owner. So pretty, pretty sedentary outside of that. Best you've ever looked and I want to be shredded. Man, you know, the term shredded has a lot of connotations, right? So you think some people might think of shredded somewhere around here, like 12% body fat. Some people might think shredded is here at around like 10 or 9% body fat and some people, like when I get down to like five, 6% body fat, that's my definition of shredded. Shredded for me is shredded on a bodybuilding stage where guess what? They don't ask you what you weigh. They don't ask you what your body fat percentage is. They just judge based on appearance. And to be judged in a bodybuilding competition, you want to have separation and detail in all the major muscle groups and you got to learn how to pose too. So um, not everyone wants to enter a bodybuilding competition. I totally get that. However, Whenever someone tells me they want to look like a bodybuilder or get bodybuilder shredded, but they don't want to do a show, the problem I say is not that you said you didn't want to do a show, but the problem here is that the reason we get that shredded is because of the show, okay? There comes a, a point in fat loss where you're actually going backwards. Here's what I mean by that. You get so lean that you start to question what you're doing. You start to suffer in the gym. You start to have other issues with energy, with sleep, with short temperedness, uh, being cold. And really the only thing that pushes you through that is thinking, I'm going to get up on a bodybuilding stage and I'm going to get some badass pictures, right? I'm going to get compared to some other badass bodybuilders and I want to be leaner. I want to be meaner. I've won multiple overall bodybuilding championships. I've won one in bodybuilding. I've won one in classic physique and I've won them in, in men's physique. I've won all three um, and I'm a pro in natural bodybuilding organization. So I've done the work to have that look. And to me, it's fun. And anyone that says like, oh, it's not healthy. Well, maybe it's not healthy for you, but it wouldn't be healthy for me to be lazy oh. to not do bodybuilding competitions. It teaches me how to push myself. It's taught me how to be a successful individual in all walks of life. So doing bodybuilding at the first time I did it at 32 was a game changer. It literally changed my life for the better. My life has just taken off since then. Now, obviously there's a lot of other things that go into it, but I want to talk to you about what it takes once you reach this place, you're at 13 to 14% body fat, because this is where the skill of being a coach actually really comes into play. Now that you're at this place, 12, 13, 14% body fat, doing an hour of cardio, 13 to 1400 calories, this is where things get interesting. Okay. Now most people go, oh man, that's a lot. 60 minutes of cardio, that's low, 1400 calories. I don't. I think it's data. Okay. You're at point A, you want to get to point B. You've got to tear down what you're worried about doing and just go freaking do it. Now, I will say this. This is when I start to incorporate multiple high carb days. Also, periods of being a little bit more aggressive with cardio followed by periods of reducing it. So what it might look like is, okay, so we're kind of in that 13% range. You want to get down to 11 or 10 might do three or four days where I do some double cardio, 60 minutes AM and PM. Can you imagine the horror? It's actually quite easy. I do it all the time. But what it really does is it kicks into overdrive that function of your body burning through calories multiple times through a day. I'm not a big lover of starvation approaches to fat loss. I think those are very short-term in success and really have high chances of rebound. However, what I have noticed is with most of my athletes, and I have athletes that are the most successful competitors in the world, I'm one of the best coaches in the world at what I do. The reason I'm successful with them is because I know how to push them and I know how to let them recover. And I know how to make sure that we're taking care of their body and their mind through the fat loss phase. That means, remember, we're crazy. We're going to push ourselves because we want to be six, 7% body fat. But 
doing those things like double cardio, dropping your carbs below 100 grams per day, dropping your fats below 40 grams per day, getting your calories to a place where, yeah, they might not be looked at by others as overall good for you. It's eliciting a response that very few people will ever understand, okay? You've got to just understand that you're doing things that most people will never want to do, but you're going to look in a way that most people will never look. And that's the way I look at this. I used to get a little worried that my calories were low or cardio was high. Now I just look at it as data. Hey, I'm stuck here. I want to get here. What do I got to do? What am I willing to do? What do I have time to do? And if you look at it that way, it actually becomes a fun challenge, okay? I no longer look at it and go, oh no, I have to do more cardio. I go, ooh, I wonder how I can fit more cardio into my day with my company, with my children, with my wife, with my friends, get it all in. And it's a fun challenge, okay? And guess what? You get to spend time around people and they're gonna be oohing and on at your physical accomplishments and they're not gonna really understand how you did it. They're gonna wanna know the one thing that you did and you're gonna be like, you know, it wasn't one thing, okay? I've been paying attention to my diet for months, maybe years. I've been paying attention to my activity. I really put myself first. I say no to opportunities to go, maybe do something that might put me off my diet. You know, you have this tunnel vision that really translates into all areas of life. Anybody that's successful understands life is not about balance. There's no balance in our lives, okay? What we have is harmony, okay? So it's not like you have a perfect amount of time for this and for this and for that. No, there are gonna be times where things are way out of balance, but they're in perfect harmony. Why? Because it gets you freaking excited. There are times when I am deep in contest prep, when I am below six, 7% body fat, when I am tired and there's no balance, right? I am putting so much energy in my diet and my training and my cardio and my whatever I'm doing for my physique that the other things tend to take a back seat. But that will all turn around when I get out of the competition prep. And that's the way you have to look at this. These are periods of time where, although not in balance with what other people's expectations of balance might be, there is no balance. Stop trying to be balanced. Find harmony. Make sure the people in your life understand. Make sure you get buy-in. Or if it's something you really love and you don't have buy-in, make sure you get new friends, you know? So really it just comes down to being in harmony. If the people around you are supporting you and you're kicking ass, you're gonna be the happiest you've ever been, okay? And so if you're looking for like advice on how to get there, really it's like, okay, you're already at 1400 calories. That's pretty low. Maybe now's the time to start adding multiple refeed days per week, you know? So bump up your carbs by 50 to 100% once or twice a week. And then also, more cardio. I love movement. You don't have to call it cardio. You can just go for more walks. You can find ways to get more steps. You can do more actual cardio, get on the treadmill, get on the elliptical, get on the bike, whatever it is. Ultimately, creating that caloric deficit is going to drive your body to break down the fat and burn it off and keep it off so that you're seeing those visual changes. And that's really what this channel kind of started out as. I started out as a bodybuilding channel, but I've also realized most people, although they look at the bodybuilders and love the way they look, I'll probably put a picture on this video of me being shredded. No one really wants to get there. In fact, I'll probably get a lot of comments about, you know, oh, you looked better before. No, I didn't. I look better all the time. I'm doing this for a physical purpose. I'm trying to elicit a response to my body to look a certain way. I've never once looked in the mirror and thought, oh, I hope somebody on YouTube really likes the way my physique looks. I could care less what you guys think. This is about me. Likewise, this question that you're asking, it's about you. It's about your response. It's about your journey. So hopefully I'm adding some value to that. And you've got to learn to have a little confidence because people will question what you're doing. You're going to look a little thin. They're going to see some changes. They might notice you're tired a little bit. This is why a bodybuilding show is a great avenue because when you tell people you're doing a bodybuilding show, they just go, oh, okay. They just accept that you're going to do some hard shit. When you tell people, you know what, I'd like to really be six or 7% body fat, they're just going to not understand. So if you care what other people think, a bodybuilding show, a transformation challenge, that's why we do our transformation challenge. These kind of things really do give you an answer to people. I didn't drink alcohol for an entire year. Now, part of that was I did diet down into a bodybuilding show, but I just wanted to not drink for a year. And so guess what? I told anybody that asked me if I wanted to drink, hey, I'm not drinking for an entire year. Shuts down the entire conversation. That's the end of it. And so really, it's not so much about the, the mechanics of it in your situation. It sounds like you understand that, you know, maybe you can add some refeeds, maybe you can take a full diet break, but it sounds like you understand that it's about buying into your goal and just not taking no for an answer and getting it done. But I would really, really suggest a, a bodybuilding show. All right. Hopefully that answers your question. It's a great one. And 
It's, it's a fun journey. I will say everybody that I've ever known that's done a bodybuilding show has come out of it and just been a better person for it. And a lot of the people that I've met in my life that are highly successful also have competed in bodybuilding shows. Now that probably is because that's who I spend my time with, but you would be uh, amazed at the similarities that I notice between people that compete in bodybuilding. They're highly motivated. They're highly organized. They get things done and uh, they're just successful in multiple areas of life not just with their physique because honestly bodybuilding takes i don't know an hour an hour and a half a day prep some food go to the gym that's it it's not that hard okay but i think a lot of people get caught up in the other things in life and they don't put the focus on themselves so focus on you reach your goal plan a photo shoot give yourself a deadline and and you'll get it done all right i'll talk to you tomorrow